The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, I'm David, and welcome to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys, and appliances just to find out what's inside. Today, I'm going to be tearing down 1998's must-have Christmas toy, the Furby. I'm really intrigued to see what's inside. Uh, I've never had one of these, well, until very, very recently. Uh, I understand there's a lot of sensors involved. Uh, it's quite capable, but I'm also not sure what would have been driving it in that time frame. I guess we'd better get started and see what we can find. Uh, I have to admit, I, f I find these quite interesting. Uh, as far as I can see, these are sort of uh, the follow-up to um, Tamagotchis. I don't know if you know what I mean. Uh, the little sort of tiny little low-resolution pixel screens with about four buttons on it, where you had to sort of feed and clean a virtual pet, I guess. And they were big, sort of 96 and 97. And then these little fellas came out shortly afterwards. And I can't help thinking, thinking that these were kind of the robotic version of a Tamagotchi. This yellow one is, is actually on loan to me by somebody that's had it for years. And we, we managed to get this one, the yellow one and the blue one talking today. They actually have a little infrared port. You can see sort of above and between their eyes making the floral sort of decoration. Although the sound on the blue one seems to be broken, it was interesting to hear them kind of sing each other a lullaby. Now the other query I have about these is I can't tell how they're put together. See around the base where the fur is held on, there's a very distinctive big sort of lump there. That makes me feel that the fur is held on with a cable tie. So I'm probably going to end up having to cut that off. Okay. This feels kind of gruesome and wrong, peeling a Furby. First ideas of how some of this hardware might work though. I think that is a switch on the back. Big red <laughs> piece of kit. Got some speakers out the side. That looks like a tiny little piezo type style speaker behind the tummy button. That didn't sound weird until I said it out loud just then. Uh, I don't want to break his ears because the ears are motorized. With, I mean, I know I could just go at it and cut this all off, but I always kind of feel like you learn more about the buildability and how it was made if you can take it apart properly and in the way that it could be reassembled. I mean, I appreciate sure I've already cut a cable tie, but that's an easily replaceable part. There we go. And lastly, it looks like the face is glued on, but to a separate piece. This white piece of plastic, tabbed and screwed on, holds sort of the face and the eyes. So hopefully, if I unscrew that, we'll be able to take the rest off in one go. Ah, uh, there we go. The big reveal. I don't know how else to describe that than a peeled Furby. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but if you listen really carefully, I can hear what I would assume is a ball bearing running around in a race or something. Now, I know that to turn these off or, or put them in standby, you have to turn them upside down and hold them. And I wonder if that ball bearing is sort of, as it sits into a cup when it's turned inverted, there are two contacts which the ball bearing ma makes. I guess we'll find out once we get inside. Turn this poor fella, oh, that's almost as scary as the rest of it. Oh, that's just the lever that makes that tiny little switch on the back make and break. And it's interesting that it's so finite, it's actually a, sorry, this switch down here is the back contact. And they're not micro switches, they've actually done away with the casing that comes with a, an off the shelf micro switch. And you've just got the little steel reeds which touch each other just to make and break contact. It's nice to see there's a nice solid board. Obviously there's some hot glue holding wires in place. Kind of interesting to get into the mechanics of it as well. Interestingly enough, I read an article that said uh, that Furbies have sort of some standard sort of speech routines that are built in. And, and from what I've seen, quite a few. So there must be some good amount of onboard storage. Um, apparently when you first turn them on, they speak uh, sort of a Furby language, a, a nonsense. After they've been on a while, they start to change out their Furby language for English. And that sort of gave the impression that they were learning, albeit without any actual learning going on. Allegedly, several intelligence agencies actually banned having Furbies in office and workplaces because they feared that there were actually microphones. I had read that as a rumor, but interesting enough, one of the first components I've seen appears to be a microphone. So we'll follow that, see where that goes, and see if there is any truth to the idea that a Furby can listen to you. Oh, uh, with 
both sides off, the main assembly starts to lift out. So if I remove the speaker and the tummy button, it still sounds strange. From the front, we should be able to remove the battery compartment completely. So we've got a main PCB with a reassuring quality past. Transistors, we'll follow the traces a little bit later when I can see more of both sides of the board. Fortunately, some of the plastics do look like they're either ultrasonically welded to the PCB, so might have to do a little bit of destructive removal. So the front speaker is on a header. Hopefully we'll be able to get that straight out. Okay, front speaker and tummy button removed. Uh, that looks like a motor connector. Two pin with some nice big value resistors and an open chassis motor, which I can just about turn. You see it runs those gears there. I can't spot what that's moving just yet. Interestingly, the, the rear, the padding on the back switch mechanism is actually soldered onto the board, but screwed onto the mechanical chassis. And then over to the side, that appears to be the header for the infrared receiver above the eyes. You can see an IR LED and the receiver just behind its eyes. Let's unplug that. And lastly, two additional connections, but I haven't found out what for yet. We'll find out slightly more. The mechanism. There is the main PCB. I'll try and move these two contacts which went together to make up the back button. The button attached to the battery container was the reset button, which you could just get through a pinprick on the case. A lot of transistors. I'm assuming that some of those are going up to make an H bridge for the motor control. We'll have a look a little bit later, but since it opens and closes its eyes, raises and lowers its ears, I'm assuming that it's an H bridge and the motor's reversible, just driven as a DC motor. It won't be have any sort of feedback or requirement for a stepper motor. I'm intrigued as to what this large component is here. It's sealed, a little bit of hot glue next to it. That, I suspect, yeah. I can feel the vibration as I, I sort of flick that up and down. That inside this little chamber, there's gonna be a ball bearing. That's a very basic accelerometer. It's kind of a binary accelerometer. It'll even know if it's in that orientation or that orientation. And it just, the ball bearing will physically make the two contacts and that switch will go open and closed to tell the Furby when it's upside down and when it should be going to sleep. So if anybody has any interest in modding one of these, you could take those contacts externally and just have a nice manual button to turn the thing off. Yeah, the microphone comes across here and is wired into a capacitor. I'm assuming that is a high or low pass filter. I have a fantastic potted chip on a little daughter board parallel to the main board. Oh, and a second as well. Both of which have got glob tops or potted epoxy chips on them. So we'll never find out what either of those are, but each of the daughter boards are at least labeled. So we can have a look and see what they are. I'll have a look at what these chips are and include details in the description of the video. And then of course you just got the battery compartment connected to it. So this little micro switch on the back here, uh, again, just two contacts, is turned by a cam, which is sort of its, it, its feedback so it knows the position of the gears and as the cam moves around, open and close that switch so it knows to start and stop its routine with its eyes open and closed, I'm assuming. Interesting, that screw appears to be just for adjustment. So when it was on the back, you had sort of a, an adjustment screw so you could adjust how far that rear contact was held back. Neat little detail. Interesting that it all appears to be running off of this single motor at the front, uh, just running that large gear, but the fact that I can't move any of the gears on the main train at the back makes me think that there must be a worm drive somewhere in there. Uh, worms are sort of inherently one way, you can only push them from the driven side, you can't back feed them. So we'll keep going. I'm expecting to find a worm gear in there somewhere. There we go. That's probably the biggest part of the separation done. <laughs> <laughs> Alarmingly, I didn't manage to see where that came from, but there's the worm gear. I suspected would be in there somewhere. I think it was in there with that main gear. So now that's removed. If I turn, should be able to turn this bit by hand. Oh, those creepy eyes are still looking at me. You've got a main camshaft at the back, which drive pretty much everything. There's a little, oh look, there we go. <laughs> Finally have a very upset looking pair of eyes and a beak. So here's the main cam assembly. As this main gear on the end is driven by the worm gear. It drives that shaft, it's keyed or locked in, probably just a press fit. And then you've got the various cams which wiggle the ears as it rotates, open and closes the mouth using these push rods. And the third actuator 
is this, which has a little rubber foot which stuck out the front. And wow, you can see that this used to rub on the back of the eyes to open and close them. But this Furby must have been unused for a very long time. I don't know how clearly you'll see this. On the front of that rubber, it's, it's not very rubbery anymore. And just there, there's a dent where it must have sat and perished for years. There you go, that is the eye actuation main camshaft with all the push fit gears our motor with its single gear open cage motor so you can see resistors will hardwire the capacitor to stop in rush current or prevent in rush current and noise those gears are all push fit i wonder if we can pry one of those off there we go nice open chassis dc motor you can see the stator and commutator nice simple little bit of kit moving the eyes the ears and the mouth all at the same time So here we have everything that makes up a Furby. Just as a bit of a wrap up and a summary, we've got the integrated tummy button and speaker, got the lovely little open chassis DC motor, got the main drive and cams, which take all of that motor's energy and actuate all of the moving parts. Got one of the reed switches and the receiver half of a light gate, and <laughs> the lovely little perished rubber driver for the eyes, main gear tray, the actuation wings, I guess you'd call them, for the ears. Here's that really conspicuous worm drive. Finally, the main PCB with those two potted epoxy circuit boards we'll never know about. Of course, poor little Furby's eyes and mouth. One of the bespoke made reed switches. Infrared send receive port and light dependent resistor. This is still creepy. This fur. <laughs> Well, that is everything that's inside of Furby. I hope you found it interesting. I was really interested to see that they managed to get all that actuation out of just a single motor. I'm interested to see there really is a microphone in there. But yeah, interesting teardown. If you've enjoyed seeing what was inside of Furby and you'd like to see inside something else, why not make a suggestion over at the Element 14 community? We'd love to hear what you'd like to see. Thanks for your time and we'll see you next time.